Yeah, no, I love it. I love it. I mean, consciousness is probably something you'll hear me speaking about right out the gate anyway, because what I believe consciousness is the foundation for change. I believe most of us are living in that autopilot, mm. bound by the habits and patterns that for many of us were constructed, developed, and practiced from childhood that never got updated. Um, so you'll always hear me speaking about consciousness, acknowledging that it's a practice, not a light switch. I don't discover, oh, this concept of consciousness being present. So I'm it. Mm. Absolutely not. Um, many of us have a habit of not even using that, that lobe of our brain, the prefrontal cortex where consciousness lives. So many of us are dropped back in our subconscious, you know, all day long. So consciousness is a practice. Um, we engage it when we're fully present in the present moment. We can learn how to hook our attention from wherever else it was, lost in thought, worrying about yesterday, fearing tomorrow, by focusing on what's here now. Mm. And I always give two suggestions about what's here now, what's ever present. One of them is your breath. Your breath is always present. If we can learn to use our breath as a focal point, we can learn to harness the most powerful thing we have, which is our attention. Mm. And the more attentive and present we are to what's happening here now, the more conscious we become. Our senses are another great hook. Senses, what are we seeing, touching, tasting? And then we're moving our bodies. We can use the tactile feeling of movement, um, of smells, of taste, again, to be that anchor. Why do we want to be present? Because we want to be tending to what's here. Um, and presence allows us to create opportunities to make new choices to mm. the future different. Um, so you'll always hear me talking about building that foundational practice. Um, and in doing that, what many of us become conscious to is our ego, yeah. that internal voice or that story about who we think we are or imagine ourselves to be more often than not based in our lived experiences of life. However, as far as I see it, it's a very limited story. We practice telling ourselves time in, day in, day out. So when we become conscious, when we begin to observe ourselves, we see how patterned we are. Mm. We see how habited we become. I call it our habit self. This includes how we are in the world, our general way of being. It includes our internal world and those endless, like I said, egoic narrative stories about us that just so happen to map onto the very real consistent feelings many of us are stuck in. Are you an anxious person? I know I was. Anxiety was pretty much all I felt. I was always some degree of stressed out, mm -hmm. right? How manageable. Some of us get stuck in sadness. We're always kind of down or low or sad. Um, so when we become observational and conscious, we can see all of these habits very, very clearly. And again, we can work toward a future where we can expand ourselves and begin to let in newer, more full versions or stories about who we are. Hey guys, if you enjoyed the content, uh, you are more than welcome to click the link in the description below. That will take you right to a free webinar where I will be taking you exactly through how to design a framework for your life and create that mission that will bring about a sense of intrinsic value to you. Go for it.